Hey there, it's Kelly Harrell with MoneyTreeAcademy.com. And today we are going to be talking about a topic that might make some of you yawn and think that maybe it's time to go and clean the bathroom because today we are talking about healthcare. Oh yeah, baby, we are going there. And it's an incredibly important topic. And there are two women I want you to meet in just a moment who are going to help you with this. Now, the reason why it's so important is because we women are typically the chief medical officers inside of our homes, not only for ourselves, but if we have kids, we're the healthcare advocates and medical choosers for them. If we have a spouse, it might be overseeing some of the medical care for them. And if we have aging parents, we can also be heavily involved in the healthcare making decisions for that parent. And with costs on the rise and outpacing inflation, it has never been more important than it is right now for families to get really familiar with the cost saving strategies, the medical terminologies, the nuances of their health plans, and what to do if you can't afford insurance. So um, we have uh, the healthcare premiums right now are by 2020 projected to rise to almost 24% of the median family's income, almost a quarter of our income. That's especially true if you are on an individual healthcare plan and that's just too much. So we need to have every available strategy to, uh, available to us that we can do to make sure that our health costs do not destroy our financial well-being. So that's why I want you to meet today's guests. Joining me today are two incredible, very sharp young women who co-founded healthcarehustlers.com. It's a website that's 100% dedicated to helping you become a more effective healthcare consumer. Now, these two women met each other in college and they bonded, well, I'm assuming you met each other in college and you bonded over healthcare. Now, Brianna, Brianna Foote, she is getting her master's in healthcare administration and she has dedicated her life to um, you know, understanding what the disruptive technologies are in the healthcare space and you know, helping us to learn how to save uh, on costs. In fact, that's how I met her. Um, Brianna was helping me with something with a friend of mine, broke her wrist and required surgery and did not have healthcare insurance. Brianna came to the rescue and pointed me to resources on her site that actually ended up saving my friend thousands of dollars on her surgery and helping her peace of mind increase. So Brianna, that was awesome and thank you and she is so appreciative. Um, sitting next to her is Kirsten Stone, her co-partner in crime on the healthcarehustlers.com website. And Kirsten had the opportunity to live overseas and experience a public healthcare system. When she returned to the United States and had a medical event of her own, she realized some of the problems that were inherent in the American healthcare system that puts individuals and families at great peril. And so her passion and her collaboration with Brianna brought us to this moment. So welcome both of you. I'm so glad to have you here. And um, anything you want to say to everybody before I kind of start asking you questions? Thank you so much for having us on. We're thrilled to be here. We are the healthcare hustlers. Um, as you mentioned, you know, you did um, some of our background, but we also really believe in empowering people to own their health and to make better financial choices. Healthcare is a huge part of the money that we're spending every day, um, especially for women. It's a lot to think about all the time. And we know a lot of the work you do is, is around empowering women as well. And we're obviously two women sitting here <laughs> trying to help make um, the healthcare side of it a little bit easier for everyone. Mm -hmm. And we know it's boring and we know it's complicated. Um, <laughs> we always say, you know, it's like uh, learning how to invest or learning a new language. It's not easy. But once you get into it, it's just so valuable. And mm -hmm. in, in healthcare, you can really save thousands of dollars a year with a little bit of education. Yep. I couldn't agree more. Um, 
and and I, that's why I love what you're doing. You know, last year I decided to um, be the cool mom. I have kids, and I decided to be the cool mom, and I hopped on a skateboard. And <laughs> <laughs> I've never been a skateboard in my life, but I did that day, and I thought, well, I know how to snowboard, so I can ride a skateboard, and I did. And I went up the curb out here outside, and I was able to go down the sidewalk, and I went up the driveway, and I'm like, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'm going to do it again. So I got the skateboard, and I went back out to the street, and went up the curb, and somehow I just kind of lost my confidence, and then I lost my balance, and wow. I fell backwards. One of the, they call the foosh fall. F-O-O-S-H, fall on outstretched hand or something like that. <laughs> and I shattered my wrist. Oh. So I, I laid there not realizing it. And then, you know, within a minute or two realized this doesn't look right <laughs> and oh. had to go into the whole thing. Now, fortunately, we do have health plan. So mm. that worked out all right. But if I had not already known where the nearest in-network urgent care room was, mm -hmm. it would have made for a really hard experience at that time. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't already known where the hospitals were that were in-network, and if all the doctors were in-network, it would have made dealing with that emergency room visit that subsequently happened, and then all the treatments, and then later on the surgery, I really could have devastated my family. So I'm, I'm so excited to have the two of you here to talk about this because it, it bankruptcy, I, th I think there, there's varying statistics on it, but they say that medical costs are one of the number one causes of bankruptcy in the United States. That's not cool. <laughs> no, not at all. Absolutely not. <laughs> That's not cool at all. So I've got some, some questions for you and um, let's just kind of dive in. You know, the two of you uh, came together over this healthcare passion and, you know, and learning how to manage costs for your own healthcare. That's one thing. But when you actually really put the energy into creating a website, do you know, around healthcare, you've got a lot more passion that's behind it. So what's the driving mission for the two of you, like really, when you when you feel your highest self coming through and going into this website, what's that about? Talk to me about that. I, I think we actually come at it from different angles, which is blending well so far. So kind of like you said, you gave a little bit of our background, but I was I went to Germany when I was 25 for a fellowship. So I was on my parents' healthcare plan. I was lucky enough to be able to stay on it and they had a really great plan. So I didn't really understand healthcare fully. And after going through some healthcare stuff in Germany and then coming back to the US and finishing it, I was like, oh man, this is a lot. <laughs> like, there, I just got a medical bill. I would literally call Brianna somewhat in tears and be like, I don't know what to do. And she would walk me through these steps and I was like, you know, I am not the only person. This is something that gets me fired up every time. I always am calling my insurance now. I'm arguing for my bills when I can or now I have a little better knowledge because Brianna's given me some advice. And so I was like, you know, all the resources out there that I was able to find aren't particularly easy or they're put out by health insurance companies. And so it's like how much of this how much of this is unbiased or how much of this should I take with a grain of salt? Not that their resources aren't great, but I wanted something that was a little independent. And so we put our heads together and I come at it from a marketing side and Brianna comes at it from a healthcare side and awesome. together we've been able to hopefully create a, create something that's helpful for other people as well. That's also easy to read and understand and to hopefully avoid a little bit of tears. <laughs> So you're coming at it somewhat from the consumer side of just realizing what it felt like for you to go through all this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think it actually, we play well off each other because Brianna can speak to her background more, but has been in the industry for a long time. And so she'll, we'll write stuff and I'll be like, wait, but what does that mean? What <laughs> insurance is one more time maybe we should create a dictionary some of these words are a little much so um yeah I think I think as a team we work really well together too so yeah and I think the other big part of it which Kirsten has so much value in is just making it um easy to understand like Kirsten said 
we looked around to see what other resources were out there. And like you mentioned too, a lot of them are either, you know, biased or just so dry. Very dry. Yes. You yes. want it to be something that's lighthearted and, you know, at some point in everyone's life, you are going to have to interact with the American healthcare system if you're in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, so we just wanted to make something that is accessible and will keep you awake at least long enough <laughs> to understand what you need to get something out of it. Yeah. Yeah, and I really have gotten that feeling from your website. Um, it does have a light and playful, beautiful feel that doesn't have that dry and, you know, put you to sleep um, kind of uh, energy to it. So I think you have definitely achieved that particular goal. Now, for you, Brianna, though, you bring a certain level of expertise to it. I mean, obviously, you're working towards your master's, but would you share a little bit about what you did in your past? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so right out of college, I had a really great opportunity to work with a company in Texas that was doing really phenomenal work around pricing transparency in healthcare. So I spent several years combing through claims data from insurance. Yeah. And it was incredible to understand, you know, for the same procedure, how depending on your insurance plan and, and who the provider was, you could be paying hundreds or thousands for the exact same thing. Even oh, with wow. Yeah, so wildly different. Um, and during those years, you know, I was on the phone with a lot of patients who were confused about how their benefits work or where they should pick up their drugs from or how to find a good doctor, lots of different services like that. So I got to dive really deep into it and I just yeah. realized, it, you know, it affects everybody and um, it is, it's complicated, but once you get over the initial barrier, there are some pretty easy strategies um, where you don't have to have such an in-depth knowledge, but you can really, you know, pay hundreds instead of thousands for certain right. things. Right. So really for you, um, it sounds like, you know, we all need what uh, somebody to pick up the phone. We all need a Brianna in our lives, right, Kristen? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I do because there's times when it's like, oh my gosh, I just don't want to do it. And you even helped me, Brianna, when I could not find the resource that you'd recommended for my friend and you popped on, you found what a resource was for and I was able to forward it on to her. So that is invaluable because I was ready to go, I don't know, I give up. And I think, so I think we all need a Brianna in our lives. And, <laughs> and, I, and I think that the, the website, uh, especially as you continue to add more and more, and I'm assuming this is a, a ongoing work in process, there's already so much good stuff there and there's only gonna continue to be more. So the, it sounds like really what the website has done has become like an electronic Brianna. Is that, would that be an accurate kind of understanding of things? I think so. In some ways, I definitely think her healthcare knowledge is definitely one of the foundations of our blog. So, and, yeah. and even, you know, as we're going, healthcare is changing every year as well. So even every article that we write, we're learning new things. Um, just as, as legislation changes and as insurance mm -hmm. companies do things differently and as also new health tech companies pop up. So that's something that we've been looking at recently is yeah. there's tons of really great healthcare tech companies that are making things like lab testing um, cheaper. Um, mm -hmm. So we're actually starting to get into that and learn even more about those types of services. Yeah, and I think one other thing too is, um, while Brianna has a wonderful foundation and is a great resource, we are also reaching out to, we have a, several friends in the healthcare in, like industry, and so we've been able to interview a genetic counselor because neither of us knew anything about genetic counseling or what they really So it's been great uh, to learn the basics from Brianna, but we're also taking on new knowledge as a team and kind of growing the blog in that way as well and reaching out to these different resources that we know exist, but actually sitting them down and saying like, okay, but actually what do you do and how can this help us and what should we, how should we approach your industry within the healthcare system? Fantastic, because that's one of those areas that, I mean, I wouldn't even know who to call without <laughs> scheduling an appointment with the doctor and the doctor has all of, I don't know, two minutes to talk to you about it. Right. So phenomenal. That's, that's a very sorely needed topic to cover. And I'm glad to hear that you're doing that. Um, is there anything that we should know before I kind of dive into some of the other questions about the, these healthcare technology companies that you're coming across? 
I think the good news is there's a lot of them coming out. A lot of them are, are coming as startups and then your bigger companies are also getting into this yeah. space. But the two things we look for is, are they making it cheaper for you or are they making it more convenient? Yeah. And if they are, we, we are, you know, trying to introduce our readers to them. Yeah. Um, just keep your eyes open as healthcare is expanding beyond the existing providers. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's new companies and fresh ideas coming in. So there's new ways to access services, which are fantastic. Yeah. And I think the healthcare system as a whole in the U S is, is in many ways, very old school and antiquated and it is trying to catch up but i think that these tech companies are really enabling us to kind of work within the system that already exists for the now so um we've written several articles where we'll kind of highlight uh three or four tech companies that are just making your lives easier and we try and give a fair assessment of oh we think this is a pro or this is a con or if if you have insurance you might not want to use this one or if you don't have insurance this could be a good resource so trying to give unbiased opinions about these tech companies because a lot of them do pop up um and we want to make sure that each person healthcare is very individual and it's we can't blanket it so we want to make sure we give people the resources so they can then make their own decisions for their own health awesome i love that and I, I think things are only going to go up from here with that. And it's wonderful to hear, you know, that new innovations are coming because so often we feel trapped mm -hmm. with the limited resources that we have. And this, this is all news to me that you're talking about kind of this disruptive uh, mm -hmm. companies that are emerging. I honestly, I'm going to have to go dig into your website and if you want to <laughs> over to me some things um, where, you know, I can tune some of the viewers in on that. I'm happy to put it in some of the show notes. Oh, so definitely. If you'll send over a link of, of some things because that's something I want to start paying attention to. Anything that can reduce costs is money back in the pocket, money that can go toward retirement or other values and goals and dreams that we have versus into an archaic overpriced healthcare system. Absolutely. Yeah. And just to kind of kick off in that direction, a couple that we've written quite a bit about, it's birth control companies getting it to you yeah. at your home and um, glasses companies, which Warby Parker kind of kicked off, but we actually went through and reviewed about 10 different companies. You can get glasses now as cheap as six ninety five. dollars um, Are you kidding? Yeah, it's phenomenal. <laughs> it's crazy. $6.95. And yeah. With insurance. Yeah. Unreal. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty incredible, and um, we're keeping our eyes open for more of those. Yeah, right. That's that's super impressive. I mean, my husband. I mean, we we were Costco members, and he just went through Costco recently. But even then, we still paid over a hundred dollars for his glasses. So, to think that he could get something that was that much would be really truly phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, we'll share those. And there's a lot that most Americans can do with an extra hundred dollars. Let me tell you. <laughs> so. How did it feel for the two of you, you know, especially you, Kirsten, when you first started getting into the quagmire of healthcare? I know it sounds like you felt a bit overwhelmed and, you know, you went, turned to Brianna a lot for things. Yeah, I mean, I think um, before we even started Healthcare Hustlers or the Healthcare Hustlers, um, I, was, I was calling her and dealing with this. And I think through her encouragement, I realized that I, I can learn a lot on my own, you know? Um, Brianna has been my friend since college, but I was like, I can do this. She can do this. I can do this. So um, yeah, it's been really great because after reading through several of these things, and it's been nice to have a resource like Brianna to be like, okay, but what if this happens? And then she'll explain X, Y, or Z. Right. Um, but yeah, I think, again, like she said, kind of getting over that initial hurdle mm -hmm. of learning about healthcare. I am now talking to people. I'm like, oh, but did you do this or did you do this? Um, and you start to feel a little more confident about it and start to understand things. So, um, yeah, it's definitely, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's overwhelming. It's like learning a foreign language. I was in Germany to learn German and it's really overwhelming, but once you kind of get through the initial steps, it starts to be a little bit easier. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, and I'd have to say it, that's been some of my experience as well. Uh, you know, just when you first dig in and start reading words like deductible and premiums, like what in the world do those words even mean? Oh. In network, out of network. I mean, that's all Greek, right? 
Exactly. I, so that was, I, for me, that was one of the most frustrating things is you hear all these things. And then there's, of course, like acronyms out the wazoo. And so um, one of the first things that we wanted to do was put together a dictionary. And Brianna was like, are you sure? And I was like, trust me, we need a dictionary. Oh, yeah. So we really had idea. It was awesome. We have it. Well, it was a joint effort, but um, we have it as a tab on, on our website. So you can go check out our blog post, but we have an individual tab and we're constantly updating it as we get new things. But yeah, I remember I was like, okay, but can you write out like an example of coinsurance? Because I don't understand. And so, yeah, again, having resources like that has been really helpful to like understand as well. I, I would wholeheartedly agree because yeah. <laughs> The reading all that stuff in the very beginning, it's, it's daunting. It truly is. And, um, but when, as you said, once you get into it, things start to become a bit more familiar. You become a little bit more fluent. You can go a little bit further, you know, like riding a bike, you know, ride a little bit farther every single day as your, as your balance with the terminology increases. Yeah, and I'll add on uh, just a piece of that. When I first started calling insurance companies to either verify benefits or find out what something might cost if yeah. they were talking, um, one of the things that I would do when I was working that first job is I'd call and talk to one agent, and then I'd call the same number right back and talk to another agent. And they would either explain it differently in a way that made sense to me, or I'd find out that one of them gave me bad information. So then I'd call back a third time and you know, hope <laughs> the best two out of three. But, um, you know, it's confusing. But being persistent, you will get those answers. And, you know, we have to really push a little bit yeah. up front. Yeah. The more you know, the more you can start to question some of the information you're getting that maybe isn't correct. Mm -hmm. That's a super important point because, you know, we all have, we all come at things from a different way and we think differently, we speak differently, we present things from a different mental model. And so hanging up the phone is a free strategy right there, you know, <laughs> that anybody can use to continue to get more, you know, expertise and be able to understand what the possibilities are. And sometimes the people that you have on the phone, they don't really know. They, yes. they, um, or they give you wrong information. And guess what? When the bills come, if you were given wrong information, guess who still gets to pay? <laughs> and <laughs> so why not use that and just double check? So I love that. Thank you for sharing it, Brianna, because that's a great strategy right there. <laughs> so, um, well, I had a thought and then it, it left me. Um, there was another point that I wanted to bring up around this. Oh, well, it'll come to me maybe a little bit uh, later on. But um, so, you know, when I work with uh, women around money, you know, one of the things that they often tell me is how limited their time is and how overwhelming things are for them. Um, and, you know, one woman once said to me, she said, you know, sometimes you share some things about money and I really want to do it. I really do. But when I've got free 45 minutes, my first free 45 minutes in the last three days, all I want to do at that point is just sit down and turn on reality TV with a glass of wine. You know? <laughs> and you get it. I mean, who really wants to sit down and do some of this stuff sometimes? So with healthcare, that's an equally complex entity. And so for the really busy women out there who have careers, businesses, kids, and all that, what would be some things that you would recommend to them that they can do to more effectively um, stay on top of this with the limited time they have? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think the first thing, and we hammer this home in every post, um, is that you should stay in network. So kind of what you spoke to earlier when we were chatting, you said that you had already figured out what emergency rooms and what urgent cares were in network when you had your insurance. It's really helpful. Hopefully no emergencies happen, but it's good to be prepared and it, it'll take five to 10 minutes, you can go on your insurance website, but it'll save you tons and tons of money. Um, and because once you hit your out of pocket maximum, you're, you're done, right? Like you don't, you don't have to pay any more money. Um, but if you go to an out of network provider, then you can pay who I'm knows told. God right? amounts. <laughs> so I think that's our, our biggest thing is make sure you stay in network. And if you aren't sure, 
I've called the insurance, I've checked my insurance yep. website, and then I'll call the doctor and I'll double check when I get to the doctor's office and say, you take my insurance, right? And they're like, oh yeah, let, we're processing it right now, we'll double check for you. So I think that's that's something that we talk about a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And then another thing you can do is if you do get a bill and you've called the insurance two or three times and you've made sure that that's actually what you owe, you can call your provider and set up a payment plan. So um, oh. a lot of times you can you can talk and depending on your certain financial situation or um, depending on how you're willing to pay for it. Sometimes if you offer to pay in all cash, some providers might be willing to cut the cost a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you can definitely save money in that way too. Um, I know I've called in the my, all doctor's office will say, okay, well, we can set up a payment plan so we can make this easier for you. Mm -hmm. But don't ignore that bill. Make sure you're proactive mm -hmm. about it because um, you'll be able to save money up front a lot faster. Exactly. A lot easier. Exactly. And yeah. Yeah. Do you have anything else? I'll add two more things. Even though we're saying <laughs> yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thinking that we're just so important. I think the biggest, you know, part of that is make sure you spend 20 minutes when you enroll in your insurance at the very beginning to understand how your plan works. So mm -hmm. that, that is knowing your network. It's also knowing, are you on a PPO plan? Or are you on a high deductible? Mm -hmm. How do your services play out and what services do you use? And I say that because if you know that you use a lot of, um, or you have a lot of lab visits, for example, yes. if you spend 10 minutes finding a low costing lab, that will save you throughout the year. And once you find it, you're good to go for the rest of the year. Same thing if you're uh, on a high deductible plan, and you find out your doctor is charging you a facility fee every time you walk in the door on top of the doctor fee, that's not how it has to be every time. Mm -hmm. So if you can find that out up front, knowing that your plan is a high deductible plan, then you switch doctors up front, and then you're good to go for the rest of the year, and you'll save money at every visit. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a couple questions about what you <laughs> just there. So with, um, how do you find out if your doctor has a facility fee? Is that as simple as just calling and speaking to their billing department? It's a really good question. Facility fees are like the sneaky little uh, devil that gets into a lot of medical bills. Mm -hmm. um, the very simplest way is to examine your explanation of benefits after you have received a service there. You'll see an extra line item for the facility. But Ideally, you do this up front. So number one, I would call to ask if your office charges a facility fee uh -huh. in addition to the doctor fee. Do you want to yes. explain what a facility fee is? Yeah, absolutely. Good call. <laughs> this is why we're great for yeah. each other. <laughs> I asked you to explain what a facility fee is so people know. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> when you go see your doctor, you're, you're paying for the doctor's time. You're paying just for the doctor directly. Okay. A lot of um, doctor's offices and hospitals now, especially as they get acquired, are now charging you this extra facility fee for using their facilities, which they're basically contracting out to the doctor. So you're paying your doctor fee, plus you're paying a fee for being in their facility. Mm -hmm. And the doctor fee is generally less than $200, but the facility fee can be several hundred. And it, I mean, when you get hit with one of those, you know it because yeah. it really hurts. Wow. So you can find doctors, it sounds like, who don't necessarily have a facility fee or charge a much lower one. Exactly. And a, an easy tip is if you are going to see a doctor and they're at a hospital complex, they're typically mm -hmm. going to charge you a facility fee. If they're at an off-site location, it's maybe 50-50 whether they'll charge you one or not. Okay. Um, that's, that's an easy giveaway, but I would always call and ask if there's an extra fee in addition to just seeing the doctor, and you can call it a facility fee, um, but sometimes they might call it slightly different wording, but just ask, is it, is it one bill or is it two? And Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And I will also add on to her um, lab billing fee. So a lot of times when you get your lab work done, they'll just send it to whatever lab. Like lab. They, you, they just want to get the results, which that's their job. So you have to be proactive and say, um, I understand you're taking my lab, my blood work. Um, can you make sure that it goes to this lab? I know it's in network and then they'll do it for you, but you have to, you have to, again, be your own advocate. Ah, so. yet another reason why we need to look these things up in advance. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, I don't know, I, we use a particular healthcare provider, 
and I know that they have an app. I'm assuming most healthcare providers these days have an app that you can get in. So let's say you're on the go and you have a medical emergency, or let's say you're out with your kids and your son or your daughter is out skateboarding and they do the same thing I did. <laughs> and you have to rush them to an urgent care center near you. I'm assuming most healthcare providers have an app that you can pop on to try and find out what's in network. Do you know about that? So my, my, I guess my advice here is never trust the doctor when they tell you they're in network. Always go to the insurance company app or website. Yes. Because that will be the most up to date. I do find that a lot of doctors um, have a list on their website, but if they haven't updated their website in a year, mm -hmm. there's a good chance they've maybe. Oh, yeah. 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 Really, you know, I hope most physicians update it, but I. Right. Uh, what I probably should have said is I may have said healthcare provider. What I really meant was health insurance company. Yeah. So, um, but having yeah. a, I, like having the health insurance company's app on your phone. Fantastic idea. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Or at and, least know your login for your online portal. Yes. I feel like at this point, most health insurance have it and you're able to search on their portal pretty easily as well. Yep. And, um, it also has your insurance card yep. linked on there. So even if you forget it, which I forget mine all the time, I just log on and I show it to the folks at the doctor's office. Oh, good. So coming up with an easy password then to remember for your phone in case you kind of want to keep it locked down. I'm, I get a little freaky about having too much private data on my phone at times. So, yeah, <laughs> sure. um, so um, let's see. What's another thing that I wanted to ask the two of you about? Um, well, we were talking a little bit um, before um, before we started our interview about the Affordable Care Act, and you know, from my vantage point, um, there are uh, women have been really great benefitors of the whole um, ACA program because it has kept us out of gender rating. And for those of you who don't know, gender rating is something that the insurance companies were legally allowed to practice prior to 2014. And what that meant was that they could charge women considerably more, sometimes up to 50%, often up to 50%, sometimes even all the way up to 80%, more than they charged men. Now that practice became illegal with the passage of the ACA in 2014. Now with the risks that are happening right now um, of the ACA being gutted, this could cause some problems for women going forward. And we're not going to go into all of that today, but I, I hope for women, especially those women who are on private healthcare plans outside of employer-sponsored programs, that the ACA stays intact because it has done tremendous things for women all across this country. And it is so vital that we keep a kind, this kind of a program in place. So call your senators, call your representatives, call anyone that you can get a hold of and tell them to fight for this. Now, there are some things that the ACA has provided for women and guaranteed all women. And Brianna and Kirsten have offered to talk a little bit about some of those things that are built into all the healthcare plans. Would you go ahead? Would either one of you? <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> um, so one of the really wonderful things is your preventive healthcare is covered at 100%. That's one of your um, guaranteed benefits as long as you're on a compliant plan. So for women in particular, um, what that means is you should go get your annual physical every single year with an in-network provider. Mm -hmm. Now, I will throw this out there. We have an article about this. Be careful to only talk about preventive things with your doctor. We'll save that for another, another time. Interview. Yeah. Annual physical. Get your well woman exam. If you need birth control, most birth control is covered at 100%. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you need something like a screening mammogram at a certain age, those are also covered at 100%. So take a look at your insurance benefits and uh, just make sure you're taking advantage of those because you're paying your premium anyway. So you might as well get those benefits. Yeah. So it's really the well woman, the preventive and the, the mammogram. Are those, is there anything else or is, is it just those three? Those are the big one for, big for ones women. for women. There yes. are um, some essential health benefits. Another big one that impacts everyone is mental health is covered. It's not covered at 100%, but it is covered. 
and it's guaranteed. So there's a lot of really important things that have come out of that. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Yeah, I, I think there's some other ones that certainly trigger once you reach the age of 50. I think uh, some will cover a colonoscopy. Absolutely. Men and women both have to get. And then also um, bone density screening mm -hmm. um, can come into play too, especially if you are breaking bones, right? You want to mm -hmm. take advantage of things like that. So yes, and, and we, if we have those things available to us and they're built into the cost of our healthcare plan, then if women are taking advantage of that, mm -hmm. they are being preventative with their own health and ultimately stand the chance of reducing risks and major healthcare um, impacts you know, further down the road. So yeah. it's, it's an ounce of prevention. <laughs> what they say is so very, very true. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, we've talked about a number of things, and, and I mentioned earlier that uh, bankruptcies are, are often, behind bankruptcies, are medical bills. What are some of the things that women and families can do right now to try to protect themselves from ever having something like that happen? Yeah, you're <laughs> I mean, I think we kind of go back to the make sure you're staying in network and establishing yeah. who are your in-network providers. Um, again, setting up a payment plan. Uh, so if, if you do have it, don't ignore your bill. Don't let it go to collections. Make sure that you're being proactive, even if it is a large amount, yeah. and talk to the hospital or the doctor mm -hmm. or the facility um, there's also an appeals, which I'm going to let Brianna take because she is better at explaining this. Yeah. So yeah, the first step is, you know, talk to the financial counselor. If you've got a big bill, a lot of hospitals, especially have patient assistance programs. Mm -hmm. So if you make below a certain amount, um, you can, you can potentially enroll in one of those and they'll reduce the cost of your bill. Like her get on the payment plan, they can reduce those down to even $50 a month potentially. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing though is if you are looking at your explanation of benefits and you see that services have been denied or the process is out of network, you should absolutely call your insurance company and get them on the phone with the hospital, get them to knock off some of those services if possible or rebuild them with correct codes. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong when claims are submitted to insurance and then back to the hospital. So don't just take the bill and, and assume that it's all on you. Yeah. You have avenues um, by going through your insurance company into the hospital directly to get the help. I think that's, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just gonna say, I just realized, you know, we're talking about explanation of benefits, which I'm familiar with now, you know, because I went through this whole ordeal last year, but prior to last year, if you said EOB or explanation of benefits, I wouldn't have had a clue what you were talking about. I would think, you mean like, what are my benefits with my healthcare plan? <laughs> um, would one of you please kind of give a brief, brief description of what explanation of benefits is? <laughs> yeah, actually, so we have a, a whole blog post all on this as well as an, an example of one as well. So feel free to look at that as well. But um, yeah, basically an explanation of benefits is what your facility will send to you with your bill. So you'll get your bill and then you'll get a separate document that says explanation of benefits at the top and it should list out point by point what you were charged for along with the codes. And so it's really important um, yeah, to, like Brianna said, to make sure to also call your insurance company as well um, and make sure that, that all the wires were not crossed. Mm -hmm. um, I personally had an example recently where I went to a doctor and I got a bill for several thousand dollars even though I have insurance and I was freaking out. And I, so I actually ended up calling my insurance company and they were like, oh, we actually have been having issues in your area and knocked it down to like a much more reasonable number. And it was just miscoded. So make sure wow. you check your explanation of benefits. And if something seems funky, or even if you're like, this, this just seems ridiculous, also call your um, insurance company as well. Excellent. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's a fabulous idea. Um, you know, and even just checking those explanation of benefits, um, we had an instance two years ago, um, for my husband, and his EOB came in, 
And I realized that a doctor had actually triple charged us for something. Mm -hmm. They took money out of our FSA account. They billed our insurance and then they sent us a bill, which we paid on a credit card, not realizing that they'd done the other two. Oh, wow. It took me reporting them to the state insurance board mm -hmm. and to the credit card company reporting fraud and to the medical board and everything else to get them to finally refund us. They didn't want to do it. So really watching um, those explanation of benefits going through them when they come in is really key, especially when you have a number of medical events that have multiple doctor appointments coming in. Yeah. It's really easy to, if you just have a one-time thing, to look at it and stay on top of it. But if you've got something that's more complicated that requires more types of treatment across more medical offices, looking at that EOB can save a family thousands and thousands of dollars. Absolutely. Yep. And even if you want to do just a, you know, five second check, if you look at the bill from the provider and the EOB mm -hmm. from insurance, look at what the patient responsibility amount on the EOB, mm -hmm. if that matches what's on the bill, it's probably correct. Again, double check it if you have more time, but that's your five second glance. If those are different, dig deep into that one. Okay, so between the invoice that the doctor's office sends to you in the mail and the EOB, which is sent by your insurance company, look for the match between those two. Look for the patient responsibility amount on both. Patient response. Thank you. Thank you That's for the very much flag if it's different. <laughs> so um, I think that is just um, really, really good advice. And, you know, in, in our case, it saved us, I don't know, it was probably about $700. So just by, by paying attention to some things like that. You know, there's one final question because some of the people who are going to be watching this are people who are really interested in um, some of the retire early movement. And we're kind of switching gears a little bit for this last question for our interview. But um, for those of you who are not familiar with the whole FIRE movement, um, it's the acronym F-I-R-E, which stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. And one of the biggest concerns for people who are seeking to retire early is how in the heck do I cover health care? In fact, it's so significant that it keeps families like us. I mean, you could have all the assets saved in the world, but if you are worried about having adequate health care or in having medical bankruptcy perhaps, you know, fall upon you in some freak accident, then it can really kill retirement dreams. So would the two of you just comment a little bit on that before we wrap things up? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we think FIRE is really interesting. We're uh, somewhat part of that community as well. Um, and we actually wrote a blog post for FIRE folks recently about what uh, different, different FIRE bloggers do and what their approaches are. Yeah. I'll point out just a couple of those. So one strategy is folks will save in addition to their 25 times their annual living cost, they'll add to that the annual premiums and the out-of-pocket maximum. Oh. So if you stay in network and don't have something that isn't covered by insurance, that should cover you mm -hmm. um, for the rest of your life if you add that on top of your 25 times. Um, Great suggestion. Mm -hmm. And that's going to, you know, add a couple of years to your equation, but uh, that, that's kind of a safe thing to do. Some folks use the marketplace through the ACA. Um, depending on what your salary is at the time you're looking, you might qualify for a subsidy. So that's one option. And then one thing that I see thrown around a lot that we'll kind of put a caution out there for are these uh, MetaShare plans that look like insurance plans, but they don't actually guarantee coverage. And a lot of folks do lean on this because the premium is cheaper, but we'll just throw a caution out there. They don't have a guarantee that they'll pay for your services, and they don't um, necessarily have an out-of-pocket maximum either. So just be really careful if you're looking at those types of plans. Excellent. Yes, so there's the MetaShare, and I think there's also some of the sharing ministries um, that are out there too. I don't know if those are the same or similar. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
Anything to add on that, Kristen? No, I think Brianna hit the highlights, but yeah, we have a whole blog post on it. So um, if anyone's interested in going a little more in depth, I would definitely check that out. Okay, great. If you would send over to me, um, and I'll post it in the notes below, um, Brianna, we didn't really have a lot of time today to talk about what you um, provided for my um, friend. And it was, um, it was an ambulatory care center, right? Exactly. As, as, opposed, as opposed to a hospital. If you want to send over the link for that particular article, I will also include that. Or you can just go to their website, which is healthcarehustlers.com. And I'm assuming that you can search on ambulatory care center. Uh, I think you have it uh, listed as how I save $4,000 on my medical care costs. I think that's yes. the title of your article, something like that. So, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Is there anything? That, oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to say um, we're the healthcarehustlers.com. Oh, then, no, it's okay. <laughs> we're, Google, will Google will find us. You'll find us. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, and then we also have an archives page. So, even if you don't remember how I say $4,000, um, we try and break it up into more easy to find categories as well. So fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, I've been saying the website wrong the whole time. <laughs> okay, we'll get you there. Yeah, we'll, you'll get there. <laughs> we'll, still, we'll still find you. That's great. Well, is there anything I missed that you wanted to share before we wrap up? Hmm. I think just yeah. uh, we really appreciate the work you're doing to help women um, and help empower women. Yeah. We really believe in that. We yeah. hope that these messages make sense to you all. And if you want more, absolutely come to the website and take a look. And we love hearing from you all if you have found great companies or great strategies that we can share with other women as well. Yeah, a lot of our ideas for our blog posts um, stem from our Facebook people or from Instagram messages we get or from people submitting questions on our contact mm -hmm form. So if you have any questions, we would love to hear about them. We'll respond or write a blog post or do both. So definitely please let us know. Fantastic. <laughs> well, thanks for having us. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I am so happy we had a chance to talk and I'm so excited about what you're doing and it's going to be thrilling to see where all of this goes. <laughs> really yeah. put together a wonderful resource and I'm sure there's there's going to be more people that are going to be asking more questions. And so, um, you know, the content will continue to evolve. And so major kudos to you for tackling a very tough topic. And I hope um, all the viewers today have been able to get a lot of value out of this. Um, thank you both so much for your time. Thank, thank you so you. much. Well, I hope you enjoyed the healthcarehustlers.com as much as I enjoyed interviewing them. Aren't they cool? <laughs> I love it when women dive deep on topics that really impact families, making things better and improving their financial bottom line. So if you'd like to see more videos on topics like this, or if you'd like me to bring the healthcare hustlers back for another segment, please comment in the section below to let me know that's what you'd like me to do. <laughs> and in the meantime, go ahead and subscribe to this channel as I'll be doing a whole series of videos on topics to help women increase their financial A-game. Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye.